Welcome to the Law, Your Money, and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Massachusetts. And I'm Camille Barron, a financial organizer also in Sharon, Massachusetts. And Roberta, every now and then our viewers ask us to have a show that talks about business. Some people might want to be starting a business or some people are in a business and they might have questions. So our guest today is here to answer those questions and tell us about the things that you should know about a business. Right, and this is in conjunction too with our financial literacy campaign. And we will, no more further ado, if I said that correctly. Yes, you We're did. welcoming Wes Ricard. He's a CPA. He also took part in our financial literacy uh, mm -hmm. campaign and the Credit for Life at Sharon High. And uh, he was well received. And so we want him on the show. This here. is your third time on the show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank Multiple you. Multiple winners. You, you bet. Still, thank tell, you for having tell, me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. The well, I'm a, I'm a CPA, second mm -hmm. generation. Um, my practice was started, you know, 40 years ago by my dad, and then uh, 30 years ago, Tom Quinn and I uh, got together. Uh, Tom's a Sharon resident and a CPA, and we formed Quinn Ricard, and right now we're known as QRGA. You can call us Quirga. <laughs> Quirga. Like, like the whale, Orga. What is the G? Uh, G is for Gonzales. Okay. Yeah. And A? A is uh, not there anymore. Okay. And R is Ricard, and Q is for Quinn. <laughs> so A is ain't here no more. No more. A here yeah. no more. And, uh, All right, good. So we're located good. in Norwood. Very good. But you serve well beyond Norwood. Yes, all mm -hmm. over Massachusetts. Uh, we probably file in 30 different states. Great for you. Large oh, that's practice. good. Yeah. Well, that's yes. good, too, where people... Uh, uh, travel from state to state. The world is smaller right. now. But I think today uh, we have a lot of questions, but one of the ones we got the most on was if people are farming businesses and they could be right. young people farming a business or if they, people could be redoing their businesses. They don't want to just be in business by themselves. And there's two types. One is the LLC, which you'll tell us about, or an S-Corp. So tell us all yes, about so. it and the differences. All right. We'll talk a little bit about the differences, and you guys can chime in and ask some questions as we go along. Which you know we'll do. Which I know and you will. And which we know you'll be able to answer them. And if I don't, I'll be able to bluff you right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're ready. Let's, let's talk a little bit about an S-Corp or an LLC. Uh, both entities give you one main benefit, which is limited liability, so that your personal assets cannot be taken if you have problems within the business. Say you're a doctor and you prescribe some medication that harms one of your patients. Uh, they could sue you, and if you did not have an LLC shell, which is a limited liability company, or you were formed as an S corporation, which is a, f a corporate entity, they could, uh, they could go after your personal assets. So you want to have that personal liability to uh, help shelter your home, your investment assets, your IRA accounts, your retirement accounts from any kind of customer who, for whatever reason, you know, could sue you for giving them bad advice, or harming them uh, personally, harming them physically. You want that. You want that limited liability. Well, especially for your employees too. If right. your employees do it. Well, generally, yes. If your employees yeah. do it, that will come back to ha haunt you as an owner. You own the business, so you have to be, also want that protection in case your employees, you know, cause some harm to somebody mm -hmm. for whatever particular mm -hmm. reason. So there are some very different uh, aspects to being both an S corporation and or a LLC. An LLC is a limited liability company. That entity can have one owner or multiple owners. A single owner LLC is considered what's called a disregarded entity so that that single owner would file for the business for tax purposes on their personal tax return. They would file mm -hmm. a Schedule C sole proprietorship. So you can either be a sole proprietor that does not have LLC protection, or you can be a sole proprietor with LLC protection. Mm -hmm. If you have multiple owners in an LLC, you'll file a partnership return. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you, if you are a single owner of an LLC, you don't necessarily need to get a separate ID number. You can use your own social security number, but I wouldn't really recommend that. If you have to give out 
1099s to your vendors if you pay your attorney more than $600 or you pay your accountant more than $600, you technically have to give them a form 1099 and you really don't want your social security number on that form that's going out to all your vendors. Mm -hmm. So I would still recommend that a single member LLC owner get a separate ID number. Okay. And if you have employees, you'll uh, want to get an ID number as well because you'll have to get a payroll company for your employees. Now, a single member owner of an LLC does not get a W-2. You, uh, you cannot be an employee by law. So if you are an owner in a partnership or a single member LLC, your bottom line profit is what you pay your uh, taxes on, your income taxes, your social security taxes. Uh, so you, if you are just a one-man shop, you don't have to get a payroll company. Mm -hmm. But if you have employees, then you have to get a payroll company for them. And the, the taxes, if I could just stop you a moment. Sure. Do the taxes that one pays as the sole proprietor, are they combined? Are they mingled with the personal income taxes? Yes. The, uh, you will pay your income taxes, federal income taxes on your profits, and you will pay your FICA taxes, known as self-employment taxes, on your bottom line profit. Mm. And you will pay your state income taxes as part of your state tax return. Mm -hmm. Since you don't have a W-2, you will pay these through quarterly estimates. Mm -hmm. What okay. if you have uh, an employee? You have to give them a W-2. Yes. Then you have to get a payroll company. You'll, you'll have, but you uh, still don't get a. You w don't get a W-2. If mm -hmm. somebody's been telling you you could be a W-2 for an LLC or a partnership, and you're one of the owners, then that's bad advice. You, you what, cannot. What if it's a law. husband and wife LLC? It's if the same still... situation. Neither one can be an employee by law. Oh. You are not an employee of a partnership. Okay. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's, that's uh, an interesting thing. Now, um, okay. In order to file for a tax return on your Schedule C for a LLC, you really don't have to do a, a proper balance sheet. You really only need to report all your cash in and all your cash out if you're a cash method taxpayer, or all your billings in and all your uh, payments out if you're what they call an accrual method of, uh, taxpayer. So you don't have to do a balance sheet for a um, uh, single member LLC that files as a sole proprietor. You just report a profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. All the cash in, all the cash out. You do want to have a reconciled bank account because that's very important. That way there you can show the IRS that you reported everything in and you reported everything out. Your beginning cash ties out to your ending cash. Mm -hmm. So it's a little easier to keep track of your records even though as an mm. S Corp you still want to have a reconciled cash account. But in S Corp, you have to have a balance sheet. So it's a little more uh, expensive tax return to file because an S Corporation owner has to file a separate tax return. It's a corporate tax return. Mm. So can you tell us more about the S Corp? Yep, I'm gonna, I'll get to that in just yeah. a couple more seconds. Okay. I want to go over a couple other things. Now, owners of the LLC do not, because they're not employees, they don't have to pay unemployment. They don't have to pay federal unemployment, and they don't have to pay state unemployment, and they don't have to pay workman's comp. But that also means you cannot collect unemployment as an LLC. So, so, so basically you're saying that if you do an LLC, it gives you the limited liability, but it's just like you're doing business like a D DBA. Yes. And, and you have all the things. So uh, I'm going to ask you, you know, <laughs> um, which one would you recommend for people in this situation or that situation? Well, we'll go, we'll go over okay. a little, in a little more detail. Yeah, after the last the, time I, I did a, an explanation with one of my clients, he picked the S Corp. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will pick the LLC. It's mm. a little easier and simpler, but for a number of reasons, he took an S Corporation. Um, a couple of other differences for LLCs is that if you have a profit sharing plan set up for yourself, that profit sharing plan uh, deduction is not deductible for state purposes, but it is deductible as a schedule, uh, as a corp S corporation. So your profit sharing plan that you set up for yourself as an LLC is only deductible on your federal return. It's not deductible on your state return. So that's kind of a big difference. Um, you have a higher chance of getting audited 
by the IRS as an LLC really? versus as a corporate entity. Yeah, yeah. They'll uh, if you have a very um, a high profitable, large gross income, uh, Schedule C, the IRS has a, uh, a greater chance of you know picking you out mathematically versus an S corporation. So you very rarely see S corporations being audited, but you'll see a lot of your self-employed individuals with large practices that they're running yeah, as, a sole, as a Schedule C. So you have a little higher chance of being audited by the IRS. Yeah, I heard that before. Right. Plus, another difference is all your customers have to report the income that they pay you if they pay you more than $600 a year. As a corporate entity, you do not have to have uh, income reported to you. So if I was doing business as a CPA in an S Corp entity, and you're paying me $800 to do my tax return as a business, then technically you don't have to report that income to me. So some people that mm. we might not want to talk about might find that advantageous if their income's not getting reported to them. And that's, I mean, you should always report all your income, no matter what you do. Mm. Um, now, mm. as an LLC, there are certain things that you have to pay every year. You have to pay an annual report of $500 to the state of Massachusetts every single year mm. that you're an LLC. That keeps your LLC alive under state law. You always want to respect your LLC, your invoices, your um, paperwork, your bank account, uh, your um, stationery should all say Roberta Sapphire LLC. Mm. All right. The public should know that you're doing business as an LLC. You have to, so that's what they call you have to respect the entity and you have to do business under the name of the LLC. Um, so, you need an attorney to help set up your LLC. The attorney provides you with articles of organization and there's a small filing fee of $100 to $200 that you have to file in Massachusetts to submit your articles of organization and get your name uh, registered. So those are the main things that uh, occur with an LLC. And so we'll talk a little bit about an S corporation and we'll go into some of the, a little more of some of the differences. As I said, with an, with an S corporation, you could have a single owner or you could have multiple owners. You have to file a separate corporate tax return. So it's not part of your personal return. The business has its own tax return. You're going to have to, you know, incur some more accounting fees with your CPA to do a corporate tax return, and you're then also going to have to get your personal tax return done. So um, the S corporation, the owner is always an employee. So it's mm -hmm. it's very different than an LLC. In an LLC, the owner is never an employee. In an S corporation, by law, you are always an employee, and you get a W-2. So even if you are the only employee of an S corporation, you would have to engage the payroll company, and that will, and, you know, incur some extra costs to have them do your payroll uh, uh, records mm. and get you a W-2. Mm -hmm. And then you submit your withholdings every week or every month, just like you normally would from your current jobs that you guys may have. Um, as I've said, your clients, if you're incorporated, do not report the income that they pay you on a Form 1099. So that's a difference versus the LLC. The customers have to report to you as an LLC owner the income that they paid you if it's more than $600. I wonder if they know that. Usually they do because really? nowadays, um, as accountants, you have to ask all of your clients whether they have filed all the required 1099s. There's actually questions on your corporate tax return and on your personal income tax return on your Schedule C. Did you file all your Form 1099s, yes or no? Mm. And that's a, a, a cause for potential audit as well because if you, if you check that box no, and the IRS wants to know why aren't you filing 1099s reporting the income that you've paid your vendors for payments of over $600. So mm -hmm. you they know, want to get everybody. Yeah, they want to get everybody. Yeah. They want yeah. everybody to report on everybody yeah. else yeah. so that everything yeah. comes into them and they can hope that you know people are reporting all their income. 
Um, for is, it, is this a way to hold real estate? Do you have clients who, uh, once they hold real estate like that, then that becomes uh, now that becomes a business. Well, real estate is generally not considered a trade or business. It's, it's, a, it's a different area of the law called a passive activity. But you normally would never hold real estate in a corporate entity, all right? In S-Corp, you might get away with it. It would be okay if you sell it. The tax would flow through to you. But normally, real estate is held in an LLC entity. So that's usually what uh, clients do with real estate. They may set up multiple LLCs for each rental property so that if they have a slip and fall in one entity, the tenant can't sue you for a property that you own mm. over here in your other LLC. They can only get at the assets of that one LLC. You notice even doctor's office, when they first came out, the LLCs, like doctor's offices and places like that, are, they all seem to be LLCs. Right. Yet they have people uh, working for them, which they probably have to do W-2, so it's just right. not... Oh, but that's a single LLC. What if, well, you can have like you can have three. a single LLC doctor. He's he's How by about himself. Three doctors. Three together. doctors would then have a partnership, and mm -hmm. it could be a it could be. So can they have W twos then? If they no, have a again. Oh no. Do, no. Any owner, mm. any owner of a partnership or an LLC is they're self employed. They cannot be a W two. Interesting. And we find that all the time. We get new clients, and they come in. They have a partnership, and they're taking W twos. Mm. You know, have I have to, to tell you, I never understood it, and and I've done these until now. You explain it right. very beautifully. We have, have we have one you. client that refuses to change. What what are they? Now? Well, he's he's still a partnership, and they still take out W twos, <laughs> and we can't get them to to do it right. So yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just depends. I yeah. mean. We, it, you, they say, well, we're not cheating anybody. We're still paying our, f our FICA yeah. taxes on our FICA, and we're still paying our self-employment taxes on just the bottom line profit. But they're, they're paying state unemployment and federal unemployment, and yeah, that's they not can't. necessary. They, they're not, they shouldn't really be getting you know, unemployment if they, if they uh, fire themselves or mm -hmm. the business goes out of, it goes out of business. Mm -hmm. So that's an extra cost for an S corporation because your your federal unemployment is not a major cost. It's only fifty six dollars for each employee, up to a, a maximum of seven thousand dollars. The state unemployment for each employee for a new employer is about two percent, and it's about um, yeah, it's about it's uh, actually it's one point eight seven percent. One point eight seven percent is the state unemployment rate for a new employer. On wages up to fourteen thousand, so that's two hundred eighty-one dollars mm -hmm. uh, an employee. Mm -hmm. So, as an LLC, you avoid that. You don't pay the fifty-six dollars for the federal unemployment. You don't pay the two hundred eighty-one dollars for the state unemployment. As an S corporation, similar to the LLC, the LLC has to pay their five hundred dollar annual report to the state of Massachusetts to say mm -hmm. I'm still going to be an LLC. An S corporation has to do similar filings. An S corporation has a minimum state corporate tax of four hundred and fifty-six dollars, whether you win, lose, or draw. Okay, and the state uh, has an annual report for an S corporation. That's another hundred and twenty-five dollars, whether you win, lose, or draw. So that's kind of a wash. The LLC pays five hundred dollars, and the S corp pays the four fifty-six and the hundred and twenty-five. That's kind of a push. Hmm. Um, one interesting thing about the S corporation is that your profit sharing contribution is 100% deductible for federal and state purposes. Hmm. So if you're putting in $50,000 into a profit sharing plan, that's going to save you 5% in state income taxes. So that's good. That's you know $2,500. Sure. So that's a pretty good savings. That was one of the savings that um, my last client, who decided to go as an S corporation, that was one of the factors that he considered very important. Mm -hmm. Another f uh, factor with an S corporation that a lot of people think is very important is what do you pay taxes on, all right, mm. for payroll purposes. In an S corporation, you get a W-2, and that W-2 might only be $150,000. But your business had a profit of three hundred thousand, so you save some some self-employment taxes 
versus making your W-2 a little less. So if your profits were 300 and you had a $150,000 um, w-2, you're going to avoid the Medicare tax of 1.45 percent on all those profits from 150 up to the 300. And so when you double that for the employer share and the employee share, that's almost three percent. Mm. So that's three percent on 150 grand. Sure. That's what's that? Thirty, forty-five hundred dollars. Don't don't they have to? Uh Recorded on the net profit of the subchapter rest? Yes, it still goes on your uh, personal tax return. It becomes part of your S Corp return. The bottom line profit gets reported to you in what they call a form K 1. So you'll get a W 2 from the S Corp from the wages that you took out that you deducted on your corporate tax return, and then your after tax profits on that corporate return, let's say it's the $300,000 would go on your K-1. So in total, for the S-Corp, you report $450,000 of income. Pretty good business. Hmm. But you don't have to pay Social uh, you don't have to, you? Yes, you don't have to pay Social Security taxes on the bottom line profit of the corporate entity, that extra mm -hmm. 300000 That's the big difference with an LLC. With the LLC, you have to pay self-employment taxes on the full $450,000. 150 that quote was your salary, and the extra $300,000 that drops to the bottom line. Does it go that high now? Well, Social, Social Security, Security in it for 2015 goes up to $118,000. Oh. But you pay that Medicare tax on all your income as an really? LLC, and that's the 2.9% tax. When so did that happen? That happened, <laughs> oh. The gosh. Medicare tax. Five to ten years ago, maybe longer. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't do the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Boy, they get you on everything, huh? They do. So yeah. um, that's a big swing as to how much you pay in personal income taxes from a self-employment Social Security yeah. point of view. Mm. So if you have a small, very small business, and the S corp profits are say only a couple hundred thousand, and you only take a hundred thousand dollars out as pay then you'll avoid the FICA tax on that other 18 grand. That's 12%. Well, does mm -hmm. anybody do regular corporations anymore? I was just going to ask the yeah. question, yeah. other than the S Corp and the LLC, if someone is starting a business, are there other choices? Well, there's other choices. You can, uh, you can be a regular C corporation. But the biggest problem with that is, is that it's double taxation. So that if you have $300,000 of profit in that C corporation, you're going to pay C corporation taxes which is potentially 35%. Mm. So that's called double tax. And then when you take the money out of the C corporation, it's going to tax, be taxed to you as a dividend, or you might take it out as more wages in the next oh, year. Okay. So you have double tax, yeah. what they call yeah. double taxation yeah. for a C corporation. And you very rarely uh, don't find that anymore. Yeah, I was just going to say, would there ever be a reason to be a C corporation? Well, if, that's if you the think case? you're going to go public at some point in time. Oh, so uh, what if somebody has a C corporation? Would they dissolve it and then? You can more you can these? dissolve it, or you can change to what they call an S corporation. Oh, and you this, can change. You can change even, it. Even right. though I thought it had to be, you had to declare it in the first. No, nope, you can not change. No, nope, not anymore. Oh, I mean, the special rules that you have to abide by. You can't sell your business within a certain period of time after becoming an S corporation. That's th something that people thought they could avoid that corporate double tax mm -hmm. by saying, okay, I'll change to an S corp today and then I'll sell my business tomorrow. Well, there's, I believe, almost a, it's almost it's a 10 year waiting period that they make you kind of wait between changing to an S corp and then selling your business so that you only get taxed at one level. It all flows through to so you personally. So they used to do family trusts and this trust and that. They don't do that anymore either. It's, it's, it's the LLC and the S Corp. Right. right. Are there other yeah, choices definitely. besides that in the C Corp? Well, you have generally you have your C Corporation. Mm -hmm. You have your S Corporation. Mm -hmm. You have your LLC. You have your partnerships. And then you have your sole proprietor without the LLC protection. Mm -hmm. So those Boy. are... You know, you weren't we're going into. You've got to be kidding! And uh, I know you you had a list of stuff, and oh, you had oh, these are great topics. And you say, well, if we do this one, that's going to take up the whole half hour. And you know, you were you weren't kidding. 
This is fantastic. What well, a wealth of knowledge. You, know, it, you notice how whenever we ask Wes a question, he doesn't have to look at his notes. He, he just has it all in his head. How many I years have you? I, I snuck a peek every once well, in a while. Well, most of the yeah, questions you just knew. How long have you been doing this? Oh, it's been f well, 40 years almost. Okay. Well, he, he was also the one who, um, when I think it was the Globe, had yes. uh, a contest of, uh, of the accountant who can... Beat TurboTax. Yeah, beat TurboTax and other people, and he did it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a quite a while ago. I still have the article in our office framed. It looks yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I, th I think that's great. You've got to be kidding. Yeah, well, what it was was the uh, Globe reporter uh, helped a sole proprietor uh, do his tax return uh, on uh, TurboTax. And then the same gentleman came to me with all his information. He was a conductor in an orchestra. He did mm. consulting work. His wife was a W-2. They had two or three rental properties. They had a very complicated tax return. And uh, I think, I, th I can't remember what it was. I think I saved him $2,000 of, uh, of extra of taxes, money. and I would have charged him $900 to do it. Wow, That's what so a story. Yeah. Wow. Well, the funny thing about it was he thought he learned so much from me that he decided to do it himself again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he and I kind of said, well, I don't think <laughs> right. so. You, you know, um, we're, we're going to just wind up with, uh, we're, we're trying to get everything, either financial literacy and... Um, People, part of financial literacy is we're talking, we've been talking about pets. Like, pets can be expensive. You notice they come out with these big pet beds now and everything <laughs> for dogs. So there are other alternatives to dogs and cats. You really? Know. Yeah. Mice and rabbits? Well, you know something? You are right. There's a top ten list. Uh, pigs are just getting on. Oh, they're guinea pigs, but there are other pigs, and um, they're making... Uh, pigs are supposed to be the fifth smartest, but there's um, <laughs> uh, bugs, which is hard to. I so mean, how does this relate there? to doing your own taxes and <laughs> selecting your business club? When are you, when are you going to get to you, your point? Can, can you, you claim a pig as a yeah. dependent? Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> When you had to get Social Security numbers for your children, you took care of all the cats and dogs and deceased people. <laughs> oh, yeah, the deceased people. I remember years ago, um, somebody, oh, we have to wrap up. But uh, this girl I worked with, her father uh, claimed a few other children. And, and in those days, they didn't have to give Social Security numbers. Right. But he got away with it. Oh, yeah. He, he had an extra few children, and he just added their names. And he, and he, he got, do they I ever, don't recommend do, that do they, to the audience. Do, do they, is, is it a, a ground for uh, auditing, you know, like they go after the Schedule C's, like if you have a lot of children legitimately? Well, no, if you have a lot of legitimate, if your children all have Social Security numbers, it won't be a problem. Oh, you're going to get you know. Social Security <laughs> numbers. But when they start see? filing their tax return and you're still claiming them, they will catch that. So, so the people who have Social Security numbers for their goldfish, they better somehow. <laughs> they better stop. <laughs> they better yeah. stop. Okay, well, that's. That's words of wisdom. You right bet. There. That's probably more valuable than anything. Yeah. Well, well Wes, it's always so great much. to have you here. It's always yeah. a pleasure you to be here. You have so many. You just have so many different topics, and and whether it's personal or business, it's it's just great. We always yeah. learn something, and I'm sure our viewers do too. Well, hopefully, so they did. You will come back. I, I, sure. I don't think what the viewers realize is CPAs like Wes have to keep up. They can't let it go at all. It's a constant, right. constant, mm -hmm. constant. That's they great. They have to. Yeah. to Continuing education. Keep their license. 80 hours every yeah. two years. To okay. Keep their well. license. It, it done you well. Yep. Thank you. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you or anyone you know is thinking about starting a business or reevaluating your business formation, we'll be happy to help you out and, and see if we can get you in touch with Wes because he is very, very knowledgeable. So remember, please let us hear from you if you have any ideas about future shows. Because remember, this is your show, The Law, Your Money, and You.